Hi everybody. So, uh, in the last video we were setting up all the ribs. All those little front ribs got done. Uh, and they are primed. They are ready to go. So, as you can see here, and I do apologize for not having the footage of us actually clicking them together, but uh, Yoko and I have the ribs set up, and we are riveting away. I think each rib, let's see, eight ribs, there's um, six or seven rivets each. Anyway, it's just four dash fours. <clears throat> Pardon me. But they are in an awkward position, right? So Because kind of like with the wing ribs and everything else, you know, they're just on flanges. And they, you know, they don't make these parts for your convenience. They make them so that they're strong. And so uh, what you need is your double offset uh, bucking head. No, bucking bar. No, not bucking bar. Uh, rivet gun extension. Right, so double offset. Anyone that doesn't know what a double offset is, look here. All right, that's a double offset. So you need that because you have to hold the, uh, the rivet gun like out of the way. I probably went over this a long time ago, but I'm old and I don't remember things anymore. So, uh, yeah, and not also, okay, so not only are there six rivets, but each one of them have two screws. And I asked this question a long time ago because, you know, six, six rivets is pretty strong. Like, why the heck do the top and bottom have screws? Kind of like with the wings. So the answer is it's because... You know, just like this bar of the wings, this has really heavy, thick aluminum blocks on the top and the bottom. And you would like, you know, it's not a bad idea to have those ribs actually have an acre point through, you know, the main body of the of the spar. So that's what those uh, that's what those big uh, bolts are for. So the bolts at the top and the bottom they go through all the way through, through the spar. Why bolts? Well, they don't make rivets that are long enough. And that's pretty much the, the basic reason. And you know what? And, 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 and Yoko's doing great. Uh, she did both the bucking bar and the rivet gun. So like I said, so she's actually interning this winter at a prominent Bay Area company. I can't... I, there's nothing I can tell you about this company that wouldn't give away exactly where she's interning, so I can't really really say but let's just say it deals with mechanics so machines and metals so it's this is kind of like second nature for her it's it's why well, I say second nature you know she's she, she's got a little bit of training and watching her work with metal is very encouraging like you know she unlike me whenever there's metal work to be done she goes oh let me put this in device so that you know it's nice and stable I'm like wow I don't put anything in device the only time I ever put anything in device is look at what when I have one of those uh, like eighth of an inch thick pieces of aluminum that have been stamped and need to be straightened. That's pretty much it. Not her. No. no let's do it the right way. Um, so of the two, between a um, bucking bar and a rivet gun, I would say, in my experience, what I have seen is that it's harder for people to get used to, obviously, the rivet gun side. The bucking bar, all you have to do is stand there, and the person with the, with the rivet gun just stops and you know they, they they hit the trigger and then they just stop at a certain point you know it takes a little bit of feel and, uh, and and she's no exception but she got pretty good at it so once these are riveted on we're done now the only exception between any of the ri uh, these ribs that we put on is that the outside ribs only have the top bolt put in as I said there's two bolts you only put the top one in later on you're gonna put something else on there and then that will be uh, then it'll be bolted in so the good news is that uh, Yoko just uh, she filed her application so she's not a full member but sh she's about to be so uh, at, at our club and, and this is you know this is both for insurance purposes and because it's in our charter is that um, we allow you to do, you know, three or four lessons with your flight instructor before you become a member. You know, we'd like you to be a member of the club. 
if you're really serious about flying. You know, if, if, if you're unsure, like I said, we'll give you a few lessons to kind of figure it out. Not everyone just, you know, has a calling like I did. You know, first, my, my discovery flight was life-changing, right? So anyway, Yoko's becoming a member, and we're very happy. Uh, and so now we're, we're pretty much done here. <clears throat> All the bulkheads have been made, bars are on, ribs are on. Now we're just kind of inspecting over some stuff. There's Christian, my, uh, my buddy at the club. Christian's, oh, he's got a really nice uh, Cirrus, too. Really wish he would lease that back to the club. He won't, but anyway. So, yep, next chapter we're going to be getting into the biggie, floor pan, bottom skin, the uh, all the ribs for the seating and the baggage area. It's really sweet. Anyway, I'm just going to let this one trail on out. Uh, thank you for joining me, as always. Uh, and I know this is, this is going to be a... You're stuck with me for at least a couple more years, so... I'm just going to let this uh, roll on out. Vector comes by and puts all of his smoothest moves on my assistant. Uh, after that, uh, we leave, but I leave the camera in place, and it stays in uh, all the way through the night. So, anyway, I uh, will see you soon.